Hi everyone, today's video is on single degree of freedom free and forced vibration system part 1. After watching this video, you will able to derive governing equations of single degree of freedom vibration system using work energy principle and calculate natural frequency of the system. In part 2 video, you'll, uh, you'll watch how to draw a response of vibration signal in a time domain. In general, all single degree of freedom vibrations are governed by a standard form of differential equation which can be derived for free and fa uh, force vibrations. So we get these uh, equation when the coordinate is linear and in case of angular um, coordinate we get this form of equation. As you all know that free vibrations are oscillation about the, about a system's equilibrium position in the absence of an external uh, excitation. That's why we get zero in case of free vibration at right hand side. How to approach a vibration problem? There are six steps we need to follow. In step one, you need to model the forces acting on the bodies and draw free body diagram. In this video, I'll skip this step as you might not need this step for every vibration problem. In step two, write forms of energy, meaning kinetic energy, gravitational potential energy, and elastic energy. We'll follow this step for single degree of freedom as it is very much easier than Newton's law. In next step, express all quantities as function of the selected coordinate. This is very important to get right form of equation. In step 4, obtain equation of motion. And then, linearize equation to obtain standard form of equation that we saw just few minutes back. In last step, we need to solve all the linearized equation which will covered in part 2 video. Starting with step 2, there are three types of elements that we need to consider. Inertia, which will have kinetic and gravitational potential energy. Stiffness of springs and damping. Let's get into each element in detail. For inertia, there will be two types of energies, kinetic energy and gravitational potential energy. And for kinetic energy, there will be linear and rotational kinetic energy. Let's consider a few commonly used examples. For slender rod or beam, which will have linear as well as rotational kinetic energy. For point mass and piston, uh, which is allowed to move in linear direction, uh, will all only have linear kinetic energy while for pulley or disc it will have only rotational kinetic energy for those who have linear kinetic energy will also have gravitational potential energy and these are mass moment of inertia we all know them well next elements are stiffness for linear spring we get kinetic uh, elastic potential energy as 1 by 2 times k times linear deflection square. For torsional spring, we get as half k times angular deflection squared. To get this expression for uh, viscous damping, let's consider power of damper P equal product, scalar product of force acting on damper and velocity of the and velocity of the point of application so we get this form from here next step is express all quantities as a function of coordinate and this is very important to get right derivation let's consider a few examples for all cases we'll assume that system is vibrating around its equilibrium position with very small angular deflection theta so for uniformly distributed uh, beam or rod, the linear velocity can be written as L by 2 theta dot. And for height, we can write this distance, which is L by 2 sine theta. For a point mass like this, and this is attached uh, 
this is attached to a distance of a from the from the axis of rotation so the linear velocity for this case would be a theta dot and height would be a sine theta now let's consider a pulley of radius r at static equilibrium condition let's consider a and b are two points connected to two mass m1 and m2 when this pulley rotates at a small deflection theta towards counterclockwise then a will move to a prime and b will move to b prime so dif displacement for mass m1 would be h1 equal r theta and for mass 2 would be negative r theta so you understand when the dis uh, when it moves upward so when you and uh, when it moves upward we consider positive when it moves downward we consider negative for their linear velocity would be r theta dot r theta dot that means radius of the pulley times angular velocity another examples of are two pulleys of radius r1 and r2 they are rotating at an angle theta1 and theta2 uh, and they are connected through a belt so their rotational kinetic energy would be half j1 theta1 dot squared plus half 2j2 theta dot 2 squared now we can write theta2 dot as ratio of r1 and r2 times theta 1 dot now and we know the mass moment of inertia for pulleys so we can write here let's place this let's uh, replace these values into this equation and then we'll get this kind of form last example of spring and damper let's consider this is static equilibrium position for spring and the damper so we can write this is the displacement of uh, spring at static equilibrium position and this is displacement of a damper at static equilibrium position if they're subject to a force and they have shortened displacement let's say x then we can write del uh, del lk equal del lc and the deflection for spring would be del del static deflection minus shortened displacement same thing will be for uh, the uh, damper for in the case of elongated displacement we'll write static deflection plus elongated displacement same thing for damper next step is step four where we write um, where we write this equation of motion uh, there are three cases we need to consider when we write this equation for undamped free vibration the equation would would have a zero at in the right hand side for damped free vibration there would uh, the equation would have um, damping part in the right in the right hand side and for damped force vibration the equation would have both damping part and external uh, force part in step five we assume that theta is small enough that sine theta equivalent to theta and cos theta equivalent to 1. So substituting this, we get linearized equation in terms of angular velocity, angular acceleration and angular position. Then we consider static equilibrium. Usually it is theta equals 0. So we get angular velocity and angular acceleration equals to 0. Substituting these, uh, these into equation, we get uh, deflection, static deflection. Now, when we get this static deflection, we want to replace this static deflection into linearized equation. And then we get our standard form of equation so again for free undamped free vibration we get j equivalent theta dot dot plus k equivalent theta equals to zero 
for damped free vibration we get additional part for uh, damping uh, for damping part and for damped force vibration we get additional part at right hand side as a function of theta as a sorry as a function of t all right so when we get undamped free vibration we can find natural frequency of this system using this equation for damped free vibration and force vibration we will get a damping ratio and damped natural frequency in addition of natural frequency so from this video you have introduced how to approach a vibration problem systematically using work energy principle derive general equation for free and four single degree of freedom vibration system and find natural frequency of the system in video two you'll be able to solve linearized equation of motion and draw time domain representation of vibration signals thanks for watching